when you think about um, delivering automotive passion to the masses, which is what Top Gear effectively did, and it's what you're continuing to do, besides you, who does it well these days? Um, I think there was a bit of a slump, certainly from the UK, because they tried to just emulate what we were doing, because Top Gear came to an end. Jeremy, if you heard, didn't punch a producer. I was there. But he was out of order. He threw a strop, and they didn't renew his contract. I just want to get that straight, because you know, I wouldn't work with somebody who went around slugging colleagues. But I wouldn't mind slugging him sometimes, but <laughs> I'd have to stand on a box, and that's undignified. <laughs> um, so after we moved on to the Grand Tour on Amazon. They had various attempts. The problem was that they kept trying to just mirror what we did. But that show had grown up around us. It's like your favourite coat only fits you because it's evolved to fit you. That show did. Um, I think it's important that people do because there's no doubt about it. Um, two key things in my life undergoing massive change in all our lives, actually. Firstly, the car. Hello, we're all in the industry. And we can see it's undergoing huge change. Also, broadcasting, linear broadcasters are falling left, right, and centre. It's all fracturing and changing. There's never been a more exciting time to talk about cars, nor a more important time, because every single person buying their next car is the biggest purchase next to your house, and it's the most significant buying decision you'll make in terms of your contribution to the future of, of the world. And I don't think we're not getting the full story. Yes, electric vehicles have a part to play, of course they do, but I don't think it can be 100% electric for a very long time. But there's plenty of options that we never hear about. There's 1.6 billion cars currently on the road, all of which can run on synthetic fuels. Uh, the German government recently pushed Europe into saying, oh, OK, you can carry on making internal combustion engines until 2035, but only if they can run on synthetic fuel. That's every car in production and every car ever made without any changes to the current infrastructure. It can be distributed in the same tankers, the same gas stations, and used in the same cars without any modification and has to be if we're going to achieve net zero. I saw a, I was at a meeting with Martin, the very charismatic and unnecessarily young CEO of P1, one of the companies making fully synthetic fossil free fuel. And he showed me a graph that said by 2050, by far, even if we could keep up the current take up of electric, which we can't realistically because China withholding rare earth minerals and also the problems of electricity generation and distribution and also price. Um, even if we could, by 2050, by far the majority of cars on the road will still be internal combustion engine. So we have to have synthetic fuel if we're going to achieve net zero. We have to make do amend to an extent. We have to keep some of the car fleet working in order to collectively achieve net zero. We will do it. Engineering will solve it. I hate to say it, capitalism will solve it. We will solve it. That's not to say we can afford to be lazy nor complacent, and neither should we. It's very important that we don't. We cannot take our foot off the gas. But we will do it.